Hey everyone, Miss Scarlet Tanager here with a little bit of a new video. Now, as people mostly on my Twitch and my Twitter know, I have decided to take the secondary channel in a bit of a new direction. I'm going to start doing some retro gaming content, sort of cover my collecting journey because I'm relatively new in serious, hardcore video game collecting, but I do have a larger collection and a larger rare collection than pretty much anybody else that I know, especially when it comes to PlayStation games. So I figured that for this first little video, I would give you a little bit of a story time going through the top 10 rarest games that I have in my video game collection and some of the funny little stories about how I came about them because, yeah, most of these Actually, pretty much all of them I did not pay market value for. Y yeah, so let's get started. First up, Lunar Silver Star Story Complete. This is technically the second one of these that I have ever owned. This funny story that I have doesn't have to do with this one, though I did only get this for about, mm, I think, 40 bucks, and it's now worth... Let's see, what does my little price analysis thing say? Not that any of this matters, this is a great game. Yeah, it's worth about 82 bucks. This is the complete edition. This has the hard book, or hard book, <laughs> the hard book. It has a little hardback game guide, the cloth map, all the little intricacies, the soundtrack, the making of, all of it. But the funny story that I have doesn't have to do with this version, or not this version, but this specific copy. That's the other one that I had before that. Now, I'm a huge fan of the Xenosaga games, more on that later. But <laughs> this, this, this little thing here? Yeah, my stupid, stupid butt in high school really, really wanted the strategy guide to Xenosaga episode one. So I traded a complete inbox Lunar at a GameStop for a strategy guide for Xenosaga. <laughs> this is one of my favorite games of all time. What the hell was I thinking? I was like, oh, well, I'm done with it. I'm never going to want to look at this again. No, no. You can pry this for my cold dead hands. Number two is new to my collection. I've only had this game for about a week. And yes, this is one of the few in my very rares that I actually did play about market price for, so it was about 80, 90, 80, about 80 bucks. Um, 80, 90 bucks. Xenogears! Yes, this sort of goes into the Xenosaga uh, story, and yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a theme, because <laughs> uh, I like Xenosaga, and it tends to screw things up for me. But I've never actually played this game. I have never seen it. I have never played it. I have played every single Xenosaga game multiple times over, but I have never pay played its predecessor. So this is going to be something that I'm definitely going to be covering on my primary channel as a Let's Play. So if you're not subscribed there, I would go check that out, because yeah, this is actually going to be a blind playthrough. I would be going into this completely blind as a super fan of Xenosaga. I hope it goes well! <laughs> Then comes the first of my survival horror obsession. So horror has always been a huge love of mine. All the Fatal Frame games, got all of those. I even spent 80 bucks to import the Wii version of the fourth Fatal Frame game from Japan. But this one, Silent Hill 3. It's my favorite Silent Hill game. Yes, I think it is better than the first and second one. Don't at me. I might go into that at some point, but this is a complete inbox copy. It has, it doesn't have the manual. That's the only thing that it's missing, so I'm still looking for the manual if uh, y'all want to hook me up or know where I can get that. But it does have the soundtrack. So it's got that at least. But this game is very important to me. Because I played the crap out of it. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is run around with the lightsaber in it. Because well, I've, un of course, unlocked everything in the original, my original PS2 save. I do have it on PC as well, um, but it's not complete. It's messed up. I need to get another copy of it. It's just like the poor scratched old bad discs. But this one is still a bit more expensive. This goes for about a hundred bucks now. And you can see on here what I paid for it. 
$17.99. Yeah, I need to get that sticker off. I'm usually pretty good about that. I still haven't done it for this one though. I need to just go through my collection and pull the stickers off and get, you know, them all clean and nice looking so they can look all nice on my shelf before I take them off and play them for the 30th time in the last two years. <laughs> and number three, right after I had ragged on it and said it wasn't my favorite, yeah, Silent Hill. <laughs> I have all of the Team Silent games except for Silent Hill for the room. That's the only one that I'm missing. This is a pretty, pretty good copy. It's a black label copy of Silent Hill. It does have a little bit of damage to the jewel case, but I am working on trying to get some of that repaired or replaced. Um, this game, oh god, how do, what do you even say about this game? It's, it's Silent Hill. It's Silent Hill. It is, I would say, and I know this is a controversial opinion, but I would say that this game is more important to the world of survival horror than even Resident Evil. Yes, Resident Evil, vastly important to the world of horror and survival horror. However, this game, this series, especially the Team Silent ones, brought something that Resident Evil didn't. It brought a psychological aspect. And in my opinion, it was this game that paved the way for games like Fatal Frame later on. And Fatal Frame is also one of my absolute favorite franchises that I'm going to have to talk about at some point. But you cannot have a horror that sticks with you, that stays with you for years unless you engage the little brain case. You can't just have zombies coming to nom on you. That's scary in the moment, might be scary a little bit nightmare inducing later. However, this, this kind of psychological horror can stick with you. There is a reason why it is lauded as having such a great story, even if the voice acting is a little, little, little Resident Evil in it. And, oh, and you know, I've got both of these two. Yes, I also have the second one. It's over on my shelf, but there's, in my opinion, there's a reason why these two are rarer than number two. It's because people want them more. Because they're better. So yeah, modern Silent Hill. I mean, if they ever make a Silent Hill again. Please stop aping on Silent Hill 2's story. It's just the same thing over and over again in the base core of your story. Yeah, go back to your roots, bro. Two is a masterpiece. It is not the template for which the entire series needs to be based on. Remember your roots, Silent Hill. Granted, we'll probably never get another Silent Hill again, but Silent Hill. This next game surprised me. So, I've already mentioned that I'm a gigantic fan of the Xenosaga game, so you know, of course, I own the Xenosaga games, and yes, this is the only game in this top 10 that doesn't have a case. <laughs> I bought these, I think, used from... I can't remember where, honestly. It might have been a GameStop. It might have even been way back when Game Crazy was a thing. Anyway, it was sometime in middle school or high school. But I bought and played the first two games, and then I needed to get these ones, but they didn't have a copy of the game in case. So... I ended up getting them as loose discs. And to this day, literally over a decade after I got it, I've still <laughs> never gotten a case for them. And now, as I'm putting together my uh, all of my retro collection and getting everything cataloged correctly, I find out that this game is worth $120. Loose. <clears throat> I'm gonna have one hell of a hard time finding a case for it now, aren't I? <laughs> I might have to trade the loose copies and then something else to get a full copy of the game. I just want a case. <laughs> I just want to put them in a nice case. My other ones are in nice cases. Why can't these ones be in nice cases? <laughs> I almost forgot. I brought up Xenosaga. Or not Xenosaga. Wow, I've got Xenosaga on the brain. Hmm, maybe it's because I'm left playing it on my main channel. So, I already brought up Silver Star Story. Lunar. It's upside down. <laughs> Now let's bring up, bam, it's sequel, Lunar Eternal Blue. This is the PlayStation version, obviously. I've never actually played nor seen the PSP remake of Silver Star Story or the Sega CD versions. I've only ever played the PlayStation ones. And yes, this is a complete box copy. It has everything in it. And this thing is hefty. 
I have seen modern collector's editions that weigh less than this. Mostly because they're 90% styrofoam inside the box. But this thing is no joke. Yes, this is a really no joke collector's edition complete in box copy. This is probably twice of it in weight. I might have to actually weigh them to, to see. But anyway, this is much heavier. It has much more stuff in it. And it cost, funnily enough, the same when I bought it. I think I bought each of these for about 50 a piece. They're now worth roughly twice that. Not that necessarily, you know, the money or the cost means anything. Honestly, if I'd gotten this sealed, found it in some thrift store or some pawn shop, I'd have broken that seal know knowing full well what this is worth. Because you know what? I like this game. I've not actually finished it because I only got it as an adult. This one I played to hell and back as a kid. This one I only got as an adult and I've not actually had a chance to sit down and play it all the way through. I've gotten maybe halfway through before, um, when I had a file of it on my PSP actually because I had a hacked PSP and then that PSP died and I lost the save. <clears throat> but, one of these days... <sighs> it even has a cosplayer's wet dream in it. It has a actual solid metal copy of the main heroes, or the main heroes, the main heroine's necklace. I think her name is Lucia or something. But it actually has a replica of her necklace, so. I mean, new cosplay? I mean, I already have everything to make a Luna cosplay from the first game. Maybe I should make this one too. I could reuse the wig. <laughs> and now we get more into the horror. So I already talked about Silent Hill, and we're gonna just keep going with that horror. And Clock Tower. The PlayStation one. Because this is the first one we got in the US. We never got the original SNES clock tower. You can get reproduction cards of the original SNES that have been translated into English, but as far as I know, it has never been officially released outside of Japan. So we got clock tower. Though actually, I think it might've been released outside of Japan as a game called clock tower first fear. But I mean, the original version we never got. Now, this is a direct sequel to the SNES Clock Tower, but they call it Clock Tower in the US, so it gets a little confusing sometimes when you're trying to look things up, because that makes Clock Tower 2 technically Clock Tower 3 in Japan, and then Clock Tower 3 would technically be Clock Tower 4 in Japan, but they're both called Clock Tower 3 in both regions. Whatever. It's confusing. But as a direct sequel, you don't even need to play the base game. All you need to know about the base game is that there is a survivor of a horrible in incident in a mansion, she's going through some shit, and you may not even have playing as her if you don't know what you're doing. Because one thing that this game hides from you is the fact that there's two protagonists. Now, I don't even know... See, it says five playable characters in ten different endings for the super extended replay value. Yeah, there's really only two playable characters. You either play as Helen, or you play as her ward who was a survivor of the first game, Jennifer. The problem is, you're almost always going to play as Helen first, unless you talk to a specific character in the first little tiny section of the game multiple times. Now if you didn't know that, you would end up playing as Helen. If you did know that, or you did it on- or you accidentally talked to this character multiple times, you would end up playing as Jennifer. Now, what it means by five playable characters is that, just like in Resident Evil 2, there's going to be a short section where you're playing as a secondary character for a little bit, in either scenario. So, I don't exactly know where they got five from? Unless they're including the, like, first five minutes of the game when you're playing as a professor character before you end up locking in which one of the player characters you're going to get, but... I am very sad that for the most part games like this are, have fallen to the wayside. The closest thing that we've had to a proper Clock Tower game in years, and you know what? Yes, I am including Nightcry. But the closest that we've had is Remothered. Remothered is a more faithful Clock Tower-esque game, in my opinion, than Nightcry. And Nightcry was made by the original creators of Clock Tower. Part of it is because Nightcry honestly isn't that well made. Uh, it does have, it definitely has that clock tower jank and it definitely has that clock tower how the hell did I get that ending syndrome. But, Remother just has more of that clock tower feel to it. So, if you want to play in modern, 
game, if you can't afford the um, over $100 it takes to get a copy of this guy, then the mother might be an option for you. Or, you know, try and shell out 100 bucks for a copy of this if you can find it, because this is actually relatively rare. Not even including the fact that it's expensive. Now, I talked about how most of these games I didn't play what is now considered market price. I, for instance, I think I paid 10 bucks for Xenosaga. But this one, I paid zero. Nothing. Godelka. This is the predecessor to the Shadow Hearts series. Now, they had planned to make a direct sequel to this, but that didn't end up happening. So they just roped it into Shadow Hearts. It is set in the same world. You actually f meet Kodelka in the first game. I haven't actually played Shadow Hearts New World, so I don't know about that one, but you do see her and she is a character in the first game. Actually a pretty important character in the first Shadow Hearts game, but Kodelka being her right there. This game is really hard to find now, and I am so lucky to have this. The case has a little bit of cracking in it, but the game discs work fine. The game discs are in right, great shape, and it has the manual and everything in it. But yeah, you probably want to know how the third most rare and expensive game in my entire collection um, I didn't pay anything for. Yeah, it's technically not mine. I mean, at this point, it's mine. It's technically not mine, but it's mine. Let me explain. I borrowed it from a friend of mine in high school. And kind of forgot about it. <laughs> I borrowed it because I was super excited because I just played Shadow Hearts and after borrowing Shadow Hearts from another friend, which I did return. I did return that copy of Shadow Hearts because she did not forget about it. But I borrowed this from my friend Gina and then I forgot about it. I think I played it some. I think it took me a long time to actually beat it for the first time because this game is hard at times. It's very survival horror meets RPG sort of in sort of kind of like Parasite Eve, except you're not free roaming around a battlefield, but it has a very similar like melding of the two genres thing going on. And my friend never asked for it back. Yeah, Gina never asked for it back. And it's been, um, let's see here, I turned 29 in about a week. It's been about 14, 15 years, so I'm pretty sure it's, it's you can just go ahead and say it's mine now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gina, if you ever watch this, which you probably won't. I'm so sorry I stole your game. Um, can't have it back, though. Hold it. And now we have another Clock Tower-esque game, yeah, Hunting Ground. This was originally supposed to be the next Clock Tower game after Clock Tower 3, which is why it has a very, very similar stalker, hiding, can't actually defeat the enemy until specific points sort of thing that Clock Tower and especially Clock Tower 3 had going on. But I can't, I don't know exactly why they decided to change the name. I think it might have been because of how poorly Clock Tower 3 actually sold, which is funny because Clock Tower 3 is actually a great game. But this is a complete copy, and yet this game can go for like 300 bucks now. So I'm so glad that I got it for about, I think, I think I got it used for 20 bucks from a game crazy in high school. Yeah, I had to get my mom to buy this. Any one of these games, if, if they were prefaced at all with I had to get them in high school or I got them in high school in their horror games, either I stole it from my friend on accident with Kodelka, or like this and the number one, I got my mom to buy it for me when I was underage because my parents did not care about what kind of games I got. If, I asked, if they were M-rated and I asked them to buy it for me, they would buy it for me. Mostly because I had a half-sister who was seven years older than me who was already knee-deep into Resident Evil when I was like... When did Resident Evil come out? 96? Yeah, I was... Six, 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 four? I was four years old when Resident Evil 1 came out. My sister was playing it. I was exposed to Resident Evil at four. Ish. <laughs> but then, the piece de la resistance of my entire gaming collection. The rarest game I have. The most expensive game that I own. Of Rose. The only thing that this copy of Rule of Rose is missing is the official soundtrack because this is a used copy. I got it for $20 at a Game Crazy and I know specifically which Game Crazy it was attached to, of course, a, um, a 
I believe is the blockbuster. That was the one that's attached to Game Crazies. But I saw it for 20 bucks in early high school. God, it must have been like freshman or a sophomore or something. But I begged my mom. I begged her and begged her. I had the money myself. And the second I saw it on that screen, on that, but I saw it was rated M, I just went, Mom, 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 you have to buy this for me! Because I'd gotten so obsessed with the story and the lore, because I'd started watching YouTube videos and going to websites, breaking down the lore and the story and all the symbolism of, like, the tiniest little things. I think the site that I went to was Rule of Rose Mysteries. I don't know if it's still around, but I got so into the lore of this game before I ever played it and before I had ever seen it. So that is the only reason why I managed to get this before it shot up to being worth $600 in this condition. <clears throat> is because in high school, I was really obsessed with horror games. I got really obsessed with this game. I saw it on that shelf for 20 bucks and I begged my mom to give it to me. And she did, she bought it. <laughs> and I remember the look on the game crazy clerk's face looking at me a little freshman or sophomore in high school looking at my mom, looking at me, sighing, and then ringing the game up. <laughs> yeah, I was obsessed with horror games from a little, from since that time I was a little kid. Loved Silent Hill. Loved survival horror. Loved psychological horror. Loved fucked up games that are banned in the country that they are set in. So yeah. That's it. The first of my retro videos. Oh god, how long is this going to be? It's going to be fun to edit it. Holy shit, it's 25 minutes long. I need some tea! So, my name is Miss Scarlet Tanager, and these are the rarest and most expensive games in my collection. At the moment, I am trying to have a much more robust collection as I go on. Mostly, again, of PlayStation 2, though I do have PlayStation 2. <laughs> Mostly of PlayStation, though I do have a few smattering of other systems like the Wii, the Wii U, the N64. I actually have a Sega Genesis and a Dreamcast of all the systems. Even though my Dreamcast lacks VMUs and games, and my Genesis is only the console has no games, controllers, or cords, so I don't even know if it's operable. <laughs> The weird things that you find at the thrift store that you just sort of yoink. Anyway, my name is Miss Scarlet Tanager, and I'll see you all in another video.